If you are an outdoors man or woman, you absolutely need this antenna. Guys, if you do RVing, if you camp, if you're an overlander, if you're an off-roader, if you are a hiker or a camper, oftentimes you've got to use a vehicle to get where you're going, you want reliable radio comms, this antenna should be in your go kit. Hey guys, I'm Kevin and this is Comms by Kemp Outside where you're inside source for outdoor comms. Well, I hope I hyped it up in the beginning of this video, guys, because this is absolutely one of my favorite, favorite, favorite antennas. And it is not for permanent mount. I, I want to get that out of the way right now. This is that temporary antenna that you put in your go kit that you pull out when you either need an extra antenna or the antenna on your main vehicle is down or you are caravanning with somebody else and they don't have radio comms and so you can slap this antenna on their vehicle. But guys, it works for all kinds of options and you can even use this as a base station antenna very, very easily. So I'm gonna show you all that. And so the first thing I wanna do guys is introduce you to the antenna I'm talking about. And I'm talking about the signal stick, right, with the BNC mount, right? The BNC mag mount, right? It's it's a two piece, right? So if you already have handheld radios and you have a signal stick with a BNC connector, right? You already have this part. This is an amazing antenna for your handhelds. And I highly recommend you get, guys, I have a bunch of these, right? I, I have one for almost every radio because they are so, so good, right? And they are almost indestructible, right? This is the kind of antenna you can tie in a knot Right now, you don't want to transmit when it's tied in a knot, right? But you can actually store that in your radio bag just like that, right? Pretty crazy. So you want to get one with a BNC. And then if your radio doesn't have a BNC connector on the top, guys, what you want to do is just get a adapter. So your, your radio probably has SMA. It either has SMA male or female. You get the corresponding adapter for BNC, and then you can just put this on the top of your radio. But if you go to the Signal Stuff website, and I'm going to put a link to all of this down below, guys, you can pick up one of these. It's a mag mount base with a BNC connector and some coax, right? And you take your, your when you when you get in your vehicle, right? When you when you're getting ready to go wherever it is you go to go camping, to go hiking, to go fishing, to go exploring, camping, RVing, overlanding, off-roading, whatever, you take this off your handheld, right? and you stick it on the BNC connector, and you just slap that on top of the car, and now you have a mobile antenna that's outside the metal of the car, right? So it's up on top of the car, getting clear line of sight, good signal. And these things, guys, are amazing, right? I'm, I'm shocked at how well this works. Now, what I want to mention up front, right, is these are temporary things. This isn't the kind of mag mount that you just set on the roof of your car and leave it all the time. The BNC connector itself is not a waterproof connector, right? So if you want a more permanent mag mount solution, you definitely want something else. But this is for those times when you're like, I need an extra radio. Bam. I need to put a radio on someone else's vehicle. Bam. This is constantly in my go kit, right? So that I can use this as an extra antenna and it works great. So let's go outside, slap this thing on the Kemp bus and test it out. We're gonna test it out with a SWR meter and we're gonna test it out on both the two meter ham band and the 70 centimeter ham band. We're also gonna test MERS and GMRS because I know there's a lot of MERS and GMRS users out there. We're gonna see what the SWR reads on those frequencies and channels. And then we're gonna come back in and finish out the video. Check it out. All right, guys, as you can see, we've got the meter connected to a ham radio and then up on top of the Kemp bus. There it is up there. You can see the signal stick with the BNC. Let's get testing. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a series of frequencies starting with 144.250. KB8 WPD testing. So we got one, an SWR of one. That's pretty good. Let's go to 145. One, five, two, five, zero. Okay, 
KB8WPD testing. All right, let's go to one four six six two five two zero. five zero. KB eight WPD testing. Dang. All right, let's go to one four seven two five zero. KB eight WPD testing. And then we'll go one four seven seven five zero. KB eight WPD testing. So that was an excellent SWR. All right, let's go to the 70 centimeter band. We're going to start with four, three, zero, 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 zero. I'm just going to do 430 megahertz. See where we're at there. KB8 WPD testing. All right, let's go to about four, three, five, zero, zero. 435 megahertz. KB8 WPD testing. All right, let's go to four, four, zero, 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 zero. 440 megahertz. KB8 WPD testing. All right, let's go to four, four, five, zero, zero. 445 megahertz. KB8 WPD testing. And let's go to four, four, nine, zero, zero, 449 megahertz. KB8 WPD testing. So that was pretty spectacular SWR, I got to say. All right, let's get it switched over to MERS. We're going to test MERS next. All right, guys, we're going to use a Radiotity MU5 on all five MERS channels. Here is channel one. Radio test, radio test. All right, channel two. Two. Channel two, 1.01. Three. Going to channel three. Channel three, 1.01. Four. Here's channel four. 1.02 and here's channel 5. 1.02. So that is all the MERS channels. Time to go to GMRS. All right, guys, so we're going to use a GMRS 9R to do the test here on GMRS channel 1. Here we go. 1.01 WRQG 272. Let's go to GMRS channel 6. GMRS channel 6 is 1.01. WRQG 272. Seven, eight, nine. Let's go to GMRS channel 9. 1.1 1 .1 to 1. WRQG 272. One, 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 three. How about channel 13? WRQG 272. 1.1. 1. 1. Let's go to 16. WRQG 272. There's channel 19. WRQG 272. There's GMRS channel 22. WRQG 272. All right, let's go up to a repeater two, channel. Three, two. So we're on repeater channel one here. WRQG 272, 1.491.5. Okay. Three, three. Here's repeater channel two. WRQG 272. Okay. Three, three, and then let's five, go to repeater channel three, five here. Six. WRQG 272. Yep. Same. Three, three, and let's eight, go to repeater eight, channel five. number eight. Here we go. WRQG 272. All right, so that is a test of GMRS. All right, guys, well, that was some excellent results, right? So on 
the entire two meter handband, we saw a one-to-one -one SWR. I mean, that's so good. I'm almost questioning whether or not that was legit. On 430 megahertz, we got a 1.03 to one. And then 435 through 445, we got a one-to-one. -one, and then at 449 megahertz, we got a 1.02 to one. So awesome across the 70 centimeter band. So amazing results on two meters and 70 centimeters. On MERS, this thing was phenomenal at uh, 1.01 .01 to one or 1.02 to one on all five MERS channels. So if you are looking for a little antenna to stick on a car, if you're operating on the MERS frequencies, man, this is it, that is killer. And then on GMRS, it also did really, really well with a uh, 1.01 to 1.1 to 1 on all the simplex channels, which are in the 462 megahertz about. And then on the repeater channels, the highest SWR we saw was 1.52 to 1 on repeater channel 2 uh, with some 1.49 and 1.39 to 1 on some of the other repeater channels we tested. So seriously wide band uh, on this antenna, right? This antenna is going to do really, really well on GMRS MERS and 2 meter and 70 centimeters. What I'm going to do, right, and I, I, I'm I, not going to do it for this video, but I might just do it on a short, like does the signal stick transmit on 220? And I'm guessing the answer is going to be no. I'm guessing that the, the SWR is going to be pretty high, but I might actually even test that out here at a, at a later date. Uh, but what an awesome little antenna, guys. And again, you know, you can fold this up, you can tie it in a knot, you can unscrew it, and you just curl up the coax. And, you know, it's really, really easy to carry this thing with you. And I mentioned, right, you know, that you don't just have to use this on your vehicle. So these are great. You can stick them on cookie sheets. You can stick them on 55-gallon drums. You can stick them on a cast iron pan, right? So if you've got, if you're out there camping and you want to set up a little base station antenna at your campsite, right? Just flip over a cast iron pan and stick that on there and you got a good metal ground plane for your antenna. So you can even do that. It doesn't even have to be just on a vehicle. You can certainly use it uh, out and about, right? So awesome, awesome antenna. I'm going to put a link down below where you can pick up one of these things. As of the making of this video, guys, I am not an affiliate for signal stuff, but I really, really love their antennas. I mean, I have so many of them. I'm actually gonna to apply to become an affiliate. So depending on when you're watching this video, it might be an affiliate link. If it ends up being an affiliate link, guys, if you use my link to purchase, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it's a great way to support my channel is I get a little commission on the sale and it's greatly appreciated. But guys, do yourself a favor, get yourself some signal sticks. So with that, guys, I'm gonna close out the video, uh, but you're gonna be seeing this, this antenna a whole lot more on my channel as I'm out and about doing things. As a matter of fact, it sits on my car right now because it's the only antenna I have that fits on the roof of the car and can get in the garage and is the antenna that I'm using right now for my APRS box build. So if you haven't seen that video, check that out. I'm going to put a link right up here. Guys, in our next video, we are going to be reviewing a bigger signal stuff antenna. This is the half wave signal stock on an NMO mount. So we're gonna be doing a review on this antenna. Also a really, really interesting antenna. Oh, by the way, one unique feature of this antenna is you cannot use it in super cold weather. So below 14 degrees Fahrenheit, nitinol, which is the metal that this antenna is made of, it loses its firmness, right? And so it will start to droop, right? So what's really, really cool is that these antennas you know, you can bend them and they'll go right back into into place, you know, and hold their shape, except for when they're in extremely cold temperatures. So I'm going to Minnesota for Christmas, right? We're going to go see my wife's parents in Minnesota, in Minneapolis for Christmas. I'm going to take some signal sticks and I'm going to test them out, hopefully in super cold weather, just to see what they do, because I can't wait. I mean, I'm in Florida, so we never see 14 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So I'm safe down here. But I'm going to take some signal sticks and go check those out. So be sure to check that out, guys, later on this year coming up. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe ring, that little bell icon that notifies you when we release new videos. And, uh, guys, anything you can do to share the channel uh, is greatly appreciated because it's a brand new channel. And I'm trying to get the word out. 
Guys, if you have any questions about anything you saw in the video or you want to comment on my testing methodology, drop some in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. One of the things that I want to do is I want to try to test this on a Nano VNA, right? I have a Nano VNA on order. I don't have it yet, but I want to test this on a Nano VNA. And I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that because the coax you know, is 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 part of the equation on any of these mag mount antennas, which is why you don't see a lot of nano VNA testing on mag mount antennas. But what I think I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to get uh, some of the testing devices that you put on a nano VNA to connect it to the BNC and calibrate the the nano VNA with just the just the BNC connector and then run the test with the signal stick attached and just see what we get. I'm really, really interested to see uh, how this performs. Maybe do a, do a full sweep and just see, you know, what I tested was 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 resonant. Where Where is it not resonant, right? That would be an interesting thing to find out. So stay tuned for that as well. But guys, for now, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. I'm Kevin and this is Comms by Kemp Outside. We're your inside source for outdoor comms. Thanks for watching. Thank you.